Okay. I'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here after lunch. It's a struggle. Um, I'm here to uh, talk about uh, Suspender CM for Android. Uh, it's basically a bunch of pain points I'm going to complain about and see what we can do mm -hmm. about it. I also want to know about what people are interested in that I can try to focus uh, either my effort or my team's effort on. Um, so why do we care about suspend assume time? Um, so the most common one is when you hit the power button on your phone, the time it takes to start drawing something on screen. That is a metric that users care about, and you don't want that to be slow. But the other one is if you have a, wa a, wa uh, if you have a wear watch, and you look at it, the time it takes to turn on the screen and display the time, that's like really sensitive. Because if you look at it and they had to wait for like a little bit to see the time, that's not a good experience. Um, and any useless work we do during suspend assume is not useful either. You're wasting power. And again, makes a lot of impact on a wearable device. And then if you're having the kernel non-Android, let's say, on a door camera and it's going to wake up and start recording, the time to come out of uh, suspend and whatnot is going to affect the time uh, it's going to take to record. I'm sure there are multiple other uh, no, reasons for having better suspend assume. Uh, so these are the high-level issues uh, that I'm aware of and things I'm looking at. Uh, one is uh, there can be cyclic dependencies between devices, and uh, firmware devlink uh, tries to parse the device tree nodes and set up the dependencies. But when, when it hits cycles, it struggles. I'll get to it more in the slides. I want to complain about S2RAM versus S2IDLE. And then is it, uh, do we need to do runtime PM versus you know do asynchronous uh, suspend resume? Those are, again, things I want to get a feel for on what the vendors might want. So yeah, so before we can optimize suspend assume, we want to make sure it's stable and dependable. That's where the firmware devlink part comes in. So as I was saying earlier, firmware devlink can detect cycles between devices and device tree. So something that came in the past two months or so. The pin control depends on regulator. Regulator depends on I2C. I2C depends on pin control. It's a three-device loop. They all point to each other. There's no way to know which is the right order to probe them or suspend them. So firmware devlink just throws up its hand and says, okay, you figure it out. I'll figure out the rest of the devices. Um, so one of the proposals I want to do is, uh, oh, and then because of the cycles now, all the cycle breaking is done on a driver level. They'll have their own property saying, oh, if this consumer is trying to get this resource, don't defer probe, let them continue, stuff like that. And even the framework, they have to add and remove device links. So I think uh, GPIO does it, maybe regulator does it too. And technically, we would be able to delete them if we could handle cycles correctly in firmware doubling. And uh, the long story short, there's not enough information today in device tree to figure out uh, what's the right sequence if you have a cycle in DT. So I'm proposing adding something like post init supplier to indicate, hey, I don't need that supplier for my init. So don't block me from probing before that supplier. Um, so the head kind of, Rob had kind of tangentially told me it's okay to add. Um, he was supposed to come in, I think he's sick, so he might be on chat. So if, but if you feel free to interrupt me on each of these slides, I want to kind of finish one and then move on. So do people have any thoughts on this, any opposition to this or not? And if Rob's saying anything on chat, I'll be kind of good to know too. Rob Clark. Sorry, Rob Herring. Okay. So if there's no strong opposition to this, this is something I'm going to add. And then after that, if you have a cycle, uh, the regulator can say, hey, I know I point to the pin control as a pin control requirement, but don't block me for that guy. So it's more as an exception list instead of uh, additive list where say I need that supplier. We'll still figure that out using existing DT properties. Um, yeah, so we can bike to the name maybe later on. But this is something I'm planning on sending out if there's no, oh, that's a question from Kevin. So once you in, implement this, isn't the next gonna, somebody's gonna ask for init one, init two, init three, and we're gonna be back to the same like levels of dependencies, um, just like in init calls? Um, this is, okay, when I say init, it's not like init call, I can, I can figure out a different name, but basically what I'm saying is, for the driver to be able to start initializing this device and making it available. Another shitty name that would be specific to Linux would be 
post probe supplier. That's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. But I'm trying to not use the word probe. No, but what I mean is the same thing with the knit calls. It's post, right? But post what? You're gonna post post one and then post two. Um, and then... No, so at least the way it's just, I'm it's a worry. I think this is the right, a good idea, but I'm worried that we we end up with levels again. I don't see that necessarily again. happening because I don't okay. plan on making it. Yeah, I don't think it'll do that. I'm struggling to explain why, but like maybe that's like a gap in understanding our thought process there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't have a rope here. Does it work? Yep. Uh, but the problem with the property you mentioned there is that you now describe the dependencies of the Linux system inside the device tree. The device tree is supposed Aha, not that's to why I didn't call it. The... That's why I call it post init. The, what you need to initialize the device. Nothing in the Linux. You can use this for Windows if you want. <laughs> then from that point of view, we already have this property expressed because there is a regular, re regulators already provided as a you know regulator supply clocks are provided so you have all this information about no, 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 that, resources. No, okay. let me clarify this is like saying even though i might say hey i need the regulator i'm saying don't block me on the regulator this, so i'm not trying to add a property to say what you need i'm adding a property to say what you don't need despite you in device tray saying you need that resource but you would reuse the resource after you probe yeah something like that don't need it yet if you want to call it, but don't need it for probing. So yeah, this is definitely not meant to replace them. That's explicitly doing it this way, where it's not that used as a crutch to point to things you need instead of using standard properties. So this doesn't replace them. Yeah, you're suggesting a, a, a device tree property here. Does it, does it also, would it also make sense to say, declare this in the driver because the driver knows what it needs at probe time, which but might be different. Every driver is doing their own implementation of it and every driver is trying to do their own implementation of breaking the cycle. Just like saying we have standard clock properties. I'm seeing standard dependency, but cycle breaking properties, what I'm looking for. Here. Right, but like, would it make sense to the driver to say, I don't need whatever I point to in the clock property to probe. So Whereas normally- part of this, So part of the thing that firmware devlink and device links try to do is also try to prevent unnecessary probe attempts and incorrect deferred probes. So the drivers don't even get to run yet for them to tell me. Right, right. And instead of like a different error thing, you know, like not you probe defer, but something like declarative in the driver that says, here are the device key properties that I need at pro or probe time, or here are the ones I don't need at probe That way it's, it's not, you're not polluting the device tree with, with something that's Linux specific, but the thing that is Linux specific is the driver implementation itself. Yeah, so number one, again, I don't think the property is Linux specific, but also the firmware devlink tries to stay away from getting the information from the driver as much as we can, because that kind of brings in, brings back some of the problems it solves already. We start depending on the driver. Then again, when does that driver get to run? Would they're running in the right order to tell me that they don't need it? It kind of gets complicated. For me. Okay, in the interest of time, I'll go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Um, oh yeah, so one other thing I want to do to try to improve suspend receive in general is try to move as many devices as possible to runtime PM, at least for Android, if not for everybody. And uh, there's a firmware dev link equal to RPM option that basically sets the runtime PM flag on all the device links. So basically it'll make sure during a runtime resume suspend, your supplier requirements are taken care of in the right order. So. If you depend on a regulator and then you're coming out of runtime suspend, it'll wake up the regulator so that everything's done in the right order. Um, I'm gonna enable this. I've never used this flag and I'm not a runtime PM expert. So I'm just trying to see if there's any bad things would happen if I do this. So I know Rafael is here if anybody have thoughts on it or off. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Then, yeah, then I'll try it out and see if well, I'll send it out. We'll merge it. If it breaks, we can continue fixing it. Hopefully, that's okay. Um, man, this mouse is annoying. Okay. Um, the next part is uh, also, also so, right? So, try, the whole point of this is to if, if you're trying to draw the first uh, frame for the lock screen when you hit the power button, I don't need to wait for USB to resume before um, I'm in this, the questions. Okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah, so if everything's runtime PM, does global async matter? I guess that's one of the questions I'm trying to figure out. Do people still see the need for it? Are they thinking, hey, I'm not be able to get runtime PM working on everything, so let's try to get this working too. And then when I looked into this, I heard from some vendors doing global async actually is worse than selectively doing async, and that doesn't sound good to me. Ideally, the kernel should just take care of it by default. Uh -huh. Yeah, Mike, please. <laughs> okay, so a comment on this. Can you, it's really low the volume. Yep. Yeah. Works? Uh -huh. Works, okay. A comment on this. Uh, absolutely uh, make it async. Huh? Make it async. Sorry, no, make, it, make it easy, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah. Okay. Now synchronous, there is no need for synchronous suspend resume uh, except for legacy stuff, and I mean legacy. Okay. If you have any new driver which requires this, I, you know, dot, dot, dot. Okay. You can... So just before I came here, like when I was preparing the slide, somebody came and said, oh, but if I try to global async, there's a flag, I believe, to do global async forever. Thank yeah, you. there is. But the, the, there is stuff will, that will break Okay. when you set it, but then it, there is no reason for you know, for uh, leaving it like that. Yeah, so I think breaking or like functional correctness, we can make sure it's correct, but I think it's actually taking longer than selectively doing async. A, there may be cases where things like uh, depend on the sequence and they take logs in the wrong, wrong order, things like that, and then log on them and then, you know, wait for... It's like a thread forking for... a concern I should be worried about where I'm like, if it's not... If it takes, say, microseconds to resume, should we run all of them in like one serial, one thread, or should we still spawn? So, so I don't have them? specific examples, but but you know, but it, it is possible in principle. But anyway, because there is this legacy I, I, I was talking about, right? otherwise it shouldn't be necessary, and everybody should be, should do async or async. Uh, suspend resume, and uh, I mean really. And if so you so if you do runtime BM, do you still see a need for async suspend resume? Technically, it shouldn't matter, right? Or am I missing anything there? Okay. No more comments. Okay, cool. Um, the last one slide, we tried to do S2 idle instead of S2 RAM. For people who are not aware, S2 RAM is suspend a RAM that hot plugs out all the CPUs except the last one before it suspends the system. And S2 idle is where it lets CPUs go into low power, uh, power collapse where the CPUs just go idle, you know, hot, hot plugging them out. And after that, uh, just normal suspend path. So a couple of issues I ran into, one of them was uh, Cisco ops are not called in S2 idle path, but drivers were still using it. So yes, we shouldn't use it. I remember Rafael said that in some uh, mailing list, but we still see quite a few drivers using it. Is that a reason we should continue allowing Cisco ops or should we make it a deprecated API kind of thing? That's one question. Actually, I still had a question on the previous slide. That's why I wanted. Oh. Uh, did the did the manufacturers ever substantiate their claims on why the global was slower? I mean, could, did no, they can measure dig, a lot of things? I don't right? have time to dig into it. Yeah, I don't. Have yeah, because that. I mean, like CPU utilization, there could be other things that are slowing it down, right? Or scheduling, or whatever. Okay. With Rafael or on him, too, I guess. So for the Samsung drivers, I'm pretty sure this is some legacy stuff that we didn't have runtime PM in the clock drivers. Therefore, we. Did, Expected okay. that there is some, you know, Cisco, or, so this can be all. Okay, I have only one minute left, and the last thing I want to complain about is a bunch of drivers doing stuff in the hot plug notifiers because they're saying CPU specific stuff, they're quieting their watchdog, for example, and then we don't send hot plug notifiers yet. So that's another missing piece. So I almost feel like the whole Cisco ops and the hot plug notifiers, we need to give like a simple way to transition, or maybe support both, just like how we do for suspend resume and runtime PM, right? If you implement one, it's used for the other. I must feel like something like that might be making uh, things easier. I got one more minute, Rafael. Um, again? Okay, so absolutely, if you if you can, make S2 idle work. Make what? Make S2 idle work. Well, yeah, I know, but... Yeah, yeah, this is the way to go, honestly. No, no other, no, no shortcuts. Make it work. Okay, but Cisco and Hotplug, you do see the issues, right? And I can... Right. No, no hot plug. So as to idle doesn't require those things. 
It's just okay. that. Well, I'll talk to you often. It I'm doesn't kidding. require any kind of like stupid scrubs. This is only for this run. No, that's, that's the last line. Yeah. I was going to say, we have CPU PM notifiers, so can you use that? Um, we tried some issues there. But what were the problems? Time's up. <laughs> <laughs>